errors. Every error keeps deviating the researcher away from truth. But the ultimate aim of doing research is to arrive at truth. When will you arrive at truth then? Conduct the research which is totally error free. Then only you can arrive at truth and say, look, this is the absolute truth, I have plumbed it. But the problem is, in health sciences, none of the research studies are error free. We accept research with a margin of errors. How much of errors are acceptable? And how do we play with that hypothesis testing? It's a wonderful area. We'll go to it a little bit later. All different kinds of research errors are broadly classified under random error. It is called non-systematic error. The very word random says non-systematic. Random doesn't mean to say it is fluke. Random has an order in it. That's the beauty of it. Don't take random. Go to the literature of Fisher, the great statistician. He says random doesn't mean it is fluke. Random has an order in it. But that order is not an order. It's a paradoxical way of explaining. You need to get into the depth of the language in order to appreciate the beauty of the presentation. Okay, the second one is non-random error. Non-random error is a very, very systematic error. It is so systematic that the results of the research are systematically deviated either on the positive side, systematically it is deviated either on the negative side. It goes either positive or negative, very systematically. That's why it is called as bias. I don't know called bias. The third one is confounding, a very interesting error which happens in a lot of research, we just don't notice it at all. It is an error which happens because of extraneous or extra variables. We'll go to it a little bit later. Remember, research errors shift the result away from the truth. Let me just deal with random error. Random error is an inevitable error when you are using the sample for your research. Invariably, we do research on the sample, not on the whole population. When we do research on the sample, we find out the truth for the sample. But how do you know what you discovered in the sample? Because the whole population may not be the same as your sample. You draw 100 samples out of population, Every sample is different. Every sample gives different results. There is something called a sampling variability. If I pick up 10 of you and measure the height, average height here, I will get one by. If I get 10, another 10 here randomly and measure, I will get slightly different value. That means every sample is giving you different, different values. That is called as sampling variability, or that is called as random error. A sample, in case if it is not adequate, in case if the sample is not a representative sample, the result of time is erroneous. I'll give you a simple example. I want to find out which party is going to win in this election, a day-to-day -day example. So I want to do a survey. I cannot include every Tom, Dick and Harry or all the people in my sample. I cannot do it on a population. I will resort to a sample, a small sample. I go to an auditorium where the Congress I campaigning is going on. I stand at the gate and once the lecture is over, the auditorium was jam-packed. It had about 1,000 people in its capacity. It's an application question. What went wrong? Wonderful. Sir says, you selected a population which is not representative. You selected them at a place where Congress and followers are going to gather. And 1,000 people were there in the auditorium. You selected how many? Only 10. That means sample was neither adequate nor representative. This gives rise to an error for random error. Now can I continue for 10 minutes? Yes, please. Fix into your study. Look at it. This is the population. I am interested in studying the whole population. But I cannot include all of them due to logistics reason. I select a small sample. 
sample is 5% of the population, the sampling error is 95%. The rest is sampling error. The sample becomes an ideal population when it is large enough. Now, in the second example, I have taken 30% of the population. What happened to sampling error? It fell down to 70%. In the next example, I took a large enough sample, 70%. Now, what happened to sampling error? It dropped down to 30%. What I need mean to say is, larger the sample size, smaller the random error. Larger the sample size, smaller the random error. Never do studies on very small samples for whatever reasons you have. I'm in IRB, I come across a lot of problems like this, even in scientific committee in the college. A lot of clinicians say they have problems with the patients. But then what are you doing? You take five patients, you do some surgery, you come out with data, you analyze it statistically using a parametric statistical test. For five patients, there is never a normal curve. The normal curve concept itself is an utter failure for five patients, ten patients, fifteen patients and all. When your statistical model is breaking down, how your analysis can be correct? It just cannot be correct. Remember, we need to have a large sample size. How large is another big question. There are many sample size calculation formulas which is not in my purview to cover right now. Although I wish to cover, it's a wonderful area. But how large or how small is another question which is answered by a separate session. Remember, Remember, as the sample size increases, random error decreases. This, that's what is graphically presented here. As sample size increases, random error is falling down. When this is the sample size, this is the error, large error. As you move to the right side, sample size increases, random error decreases. Another way to reduce random error is, go for simple random sampling. Never select a sample based on convenience. Sir, in my department, I have some patients who have given consent for the study. I have deliberately picked them to my study. That is called as convenient sampling. When you have a convenient sample, there is a lot of random error in your particular study. Only when you go for random selection of a sample from a target population, then random, random error can be reduced. The second type of error is bias. As I said, bias is a systematic error, not like random error. Random error is unpredictable, unsystematic, we cannot understand how it deflects the result. But bias is very systematic. It pulls the results either towards positive or towards negative side consistently, accurately or correctly to a precision. By increasing sample size, Never think you can reduce bias. By increasing sample size, you can reduce random error. But by increasing sample size, bias cannot be reduced. Bias continues just like that, irrespective of your sample size. Then how to reduce bias? Standardizing, calibrating your instruments, devices, tools, materials, methods, observation, clinical usage. Standardize all this, if at all if you want to eliminate a rather marginalized bias. Go for random allocation and random selection. Go for matching. Match the study group perfectly with the control group. Control group is a replica of study group in all respects, but for that one particular factor which is understanding. That means to say, if you have A on the study group, you should have A dash on the control group. If you have B in the study group, you should have B dash in the study in the control group. Perfect matches should be there. Always in your research, remember, selection of study group is not difficult. Based on a criteria, you can select. But selecting a control is crucial for the research success. Controls should be very accurate. Quite a lot of times research goes down the drain down the brain basically because control selection is wrong and it is impossible to get a perfect control for me. Who 
can be a perfect control for me if I am on the study group? Not my brother, not my sister, not my parents, not even my clone. Because my clone is genetically same, but my clone is nurtured. Nurtured in a different way. Nature is same, but nurture is different. So it's very difficult to get ideal controls and that's where research actually stresses upon.